Pentecost Sunday. For some people, you really understand what that means. To other people, you don't really have a clue what that's about. But hopefully, we can add some integrity to the Word of God today and kind of share with you some things that the Lord laid on my heart. I want you to go to the Gospel of St. John, chapter 16, verse 7 through 15. The Gospel of St. John, chapter 16, verse 7 through 15. And there you will find the reading of God's Word. And it reads this way, Nevertheless, I tell you the truth, that it is expedient for you that I go away. This is Jesus talking. For if I go not away, the Comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. Listen carefully. And when he has come, he will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. Of sin because they believe not on me. Of righteousness because I go to my Father and ye see me no more. Of judgment because the prince of this world is judged. I have yet many things to say unto you. Now, this is where I want you to really, really hone in real tight. I have yet many things to say unto you, but ye cannot bear them now. Howbeit when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak. And he will show you, and he will show you things to come. He shall glorify me, for he shall receive of mine, and he shall show it unto you, my God, my God. All things that the Father have are mine. Therefore said I that he shall take of mine, he shall take of mine, he shall take of mine, and shall show it unto you. Can you say amen? amen. Now listen, I, I got this I want to share with you. If you're in the house or you're with your kids, and you're sitting with your husband, uh, just touch your neighbor and say, the great download. That's what we're going to talk about, the great, the great download. Because that's what this text is talking about, is the great download download. There's a great download. He shall take of mine and show it unto you. It's a, it's a download. That's what we're celebrating today is the, the greatest download that has ever been done came before Apple, came before Microsoft, came before Texas Instruments, came before technology, came before electricity, came before lights. The greatest download came down from above. And that's what we're celebrating when we celebrate Pentecost is a glorious download where heaven downloads to earth, where the celestial downloads to the terrestrial, where the divine downloads to the human. That's what Pentecost is all about. We're going to have a good time. Get ready for the great download. Somebody shout amen. amen. Let's pray. Spirit of the living God, fall fresh on your word right now. Let it be made flesh while it's being preached. Minister to the needs of your people, great God that you are. I thank you for increase in Jesus' name. Somebody who loves him, shout amen. amen. You may be seated in his presence. It occurred to me, uh, being, the pastor, being the pastor of this, this great church, and I love this church, and I love all of our members, and I love all of our e-members, and I love all of our partners, and I, I love God's people in general, that, that, that you cannot assume that everybody understands what Pentecost Sunday is. Uh, my father's people were all AME. My mother's people were all Baptists. I grew up Baptist in the early years of my life and then got spirit-filled and joined an apostolic Pentecostal church. And it was there that I was introduced to Pentecost Sunday. As a little boy, I never heard anything about Pentecost Sunday. We, we talked a lot about Easter. They didn't even call it Resurrection Sunday like they do now. They, they, they called it Easter. We talked a lot about the death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord, but we didn't talk much about Pentecost at all. 
And so there was no celebration of Pentecost Sunday. So to those of you that have come from other reformations, I don't want to assume that you have been taught about Pentecost Sunday. Some, some denominational churches do. Some people don't talk about it at all. And then amongst those of you of the Pentecostal persuasion, uh, we celebrated Pentecost Sunday, but we celebrated it primarily from the book of Acts. Uh, we talked about the indwelling of the Holy Spirit and the coming and the filling of God's people with the Holy Spirit. And we talked about Pentecost Sunday as if Pentecost Sunday had no roots, as if it derived its origin in the book of Acts. But I want to go a little bit deeper and put it in context this morning, and I'm going to take my time. For some of you, it might be new information. For some of you, it might be just stirring up your memory about information that has already pre-existed. Uh, but I want to take my time and really get down into a deeper and richer understanding of what this is all about. I per perhaps I should start by defining what a download is because you may have come from uh, uh, my generation and I don't want to assume that you necessarily know what a download is. Uh, the definition of a download is, a down is to download past tense, downloaded, particularly to copy from one computer system to another, typically over the internet, to download. In other words, there's data on the internet you want to download it into your computer, or there's information on one uh, computer, you want to download it onto another system, and it, it is the ability to take that that was not there, existed somewhere else, and possess it by downloading. In the noun sense, it's an act or process of downloading data like a, downloading a movie, for example. The movie exists, you want to download it, you're, you're, you're capturing it and bringing it down into the realm of your reach. That's what it means to, to download. To a large degree, what happened in the book of Acts is a download, but it did not start there and it has deeper implications uh, than just that. You must begin to understand, first of all, when we start talking about uh, what I just read to you, you, you get some sort of clue and beginning to understand that Jesus is trying to prepare his disciples for a download, that what is in him is about to be downloaded into them, and in order for it to be downloaded, he has to go away and that if he goes not away, the comforter, which is the download, will not be able to come. He says, in another place, he says, heretofore, I have been with you, but I'm getting ready to download, and I shall be in you. The nature of the relationship is going to be internal and not just external. You've been with me, but I shall be in you. He told woman, I shall be, one woman, I shall be in you, a well of living water springing up into everlasting life. Jesus is preparing them for the download. Anytime a relationship shifts, you have to prepare people for a change. It doesn't mean that it ends. It just means that it's shifted. It takes on a new dimension. It takes on a, a, a different continuity. It takes on a, a different relativity. Uh, I will not be the voice in your ear, but I'm going to be the voice in your spirit. I will not be the voice externally, I will be the voice internally. I have been with you. You're used to watching me. There's, he said, you will see me no more, but I will be in you. You won't see me, but you're going to have to sense me. In Hebrews, we talk about having our senses, talking about our spiritual senses, exercised by reason of use. A lot of church people have a lot of noise, make a lot of noise, a lot of shouting, a lot of dancing, but they have not had their senses exercised by reason of use. What do you mean senses? Senses is sight and hearing and taste and smell. What do you mean? Yeah, those are all natural senses, but the Bible teaches us that we have spiritual senses as well. 
and that when we use our spiritual senses, they get exercised by reason of use. The more we use them, the more they become relevant in our lives. After a while, you can hear God better. After a while, you can see his handiwork in your situation. After a while, you can sense him in your house. You become more sensitive by reason of use. The whole notion of fasting is to deny the outer man so that the inner man is strengthened. The more you cut down the physical senses, the more you increase the spiritual senses. Are you getting what I'm saying to you? This notion I want you to realize uh, when we start in the book of Acts and we hear uh, the word from the book of Acts, I want you to realize that Acts represents, the book of Acts really represents the beginning of the New Testament. Not Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, because Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John are all writings recorded about Jesus who lived during the Old Testament. How can you say that? I can say it this way, because you cannot have a New Testament until the testator dies. So everything that Jesus did while he was living before, prior to the cross, though it is chronologically placed in your New Testament Bible, it is still up under the Old Testament covenant. We can't have a New Testament because Christ is the testator and he can't download the New Testament until he goes to the cross. When he goes to the cross, he sets some things in motion that create a download for us to step out of Old Testament over into New Testament and start to walk in the newness of life. Are you seeing what I'm saying to you? Now, if you can chew that up, and say, I, I got some stuff for you this morning. I hope you're ready for it. If you can chew that up, then the book of Acts becomes the beginning of the New Testament. Okay, Let, let's go deeper. The book of Acts is to the New Testament what the book of Genesis is to the Old Testament. Oh, yeah. The book of Acts. Uh, how can you say that? The, in the book of Genesis, the first thing when God is introduced to us, he is introduced to us by the moving of the Spirit. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness covered the face of the deep. Watch this. And the Spirit moved. That's the first thing we hear about the Spirit. And the Spirit moved. You can't get through Genesis 1, 2, and through without the Spirit moving. It was the moving of the Holy Spirit that starts a creatorial process in the book of Genesis. When the Spirit moved, God began to speak out of the moving of the Holy Spirit. So as the Spirit moved, the Spirit spoke. And as the Spirit spoke, it created things. Let there be light. Let there be firmament above the waters and beneath the waters. Let there be lesser lights and greater lights. Let's separate the firmaments above from the firmament beneath. The Spirit moved, the Spirit spoke, and then it became in the book of Genesis. In the book of Genesis, the Spirit established order out of disorder. It established consistency out of chaos, separating this from that. It began to set things in order. Okay, let's go to the book of Acts. In the book of Acts, when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were in one place with one accord. Suddenly there came a sound from heaven like a mighty rushing wind cloven tongues appeared like as a fire and the spirit sat upon each of them. So again, the spirit moved again. It moved in Genesis for creation. It moved in Acts for recreation. It moved, oh, you, didn't, you didn't get that. It moved in Genesis for creation. It moved in Acts for recreation. It all starts with the moving of the Holy Spirit. So we see the Spirit move. Suddenly there came a sound from heaven like a mighty rushing wind. Cloven tongues appeared like as a fire and sat upon each of them and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. After the Spirit moved, then the Spirit spoke and they spake as the Spirit of God gave them utterance. The same Spirit that moved and spoke in Genesis Genesis is the same spirit that moved and spoke in the book of Acts. Wherever there is a move of the spirit, there will be a language of the spirit. Because God's spirit is not muted, it has all of its senses. If it spoke in the Old Testament, 
it speaks in the New Testament. This time it speaks through us before it spoke in the earth. Now it's speaking through the earth. Oh, y'all don't hear what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, it spoke to the earth. Now in Acts, it speaks through the earth. And they spake with tongues as the Spirit of God gave them utterance. So in Genesis, he's speaking to it. In Acts, he's speaking through it. But it is the same Spirit that is doing both things. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Why then, Bishop, is this important? It is important because the friends that my, the mistakes that my Pentecostal friends make, they think everything starts on the day of Pentecost as if it is an afterthought of God, when in fact God has planned the end from the beginning. When you begin to go back to the beginning, you begin to understand that your God had a strategy before the enemy had an attack. Oh, y'all don't hear what I'm saying. God had a strategy before the enemy had an attack. Everybody will be surprised before God is surprised. All the government, all the FBI, all the CIA, all the presidents and kings and monarchies and kingdoms will all be surprised before God is surprised. Nothing surprises him. He's never caught off guard. He knows what's going to happen. He worketh all things after the counsel of his own will. And you don't understand the beauty of Pentecost without you understanding that Pentecost is not something that God did off the spur of the moment that God did because he was in a situation, that God did so you could have a great service, that God did so you could dance in the service, that God did so you could walk the pews, that God did so you could clap your hand, that God did so you could have revival service, that God did so that you could be a great preacher. No, Pentecost is a divine strategy that goes from one end of the book to the other. The Spirit moved, the Spirit spoke, the Spirit moved, Moved, the Spirit spoke. And then the Spirit started calling things to order. And all throughout the book of Acts, the Spirit moved, the Spirit spoke, and then the Spirit started calling things to order. Let there be apostles and prophets and pastors and teachers and evangelists. It's all calling things to order. Let the deacons take care of the widows. It's calling things to order because the same God who stopped the chaos in the creation is stopping the chaos of the New Testament church and it started on the day of Pentecost. When Jesus was crucified and they pierced him in the side, he was pregnant with the church and out of his side came blood and water. Any mother will tell you the water breaks before the baby is born and when the water broke, it was a sign that he had gone into labor and he was starting the press of making a download. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you? I want you to understand this so that you just not walking around with words, oh, it's Pentecost Sunday, but you really don't know what it means. It's good, isn't it? I want you to get this, and the Bible says in all that getting, get an understanding. It also helps you to understand the intelligence of God. That God is not just energy, as my Jehovah Witness brothers suggest that God is a force or energy. No, wind is a force. Lightning is a force. You can have force and not have intelligence. God is not just a force. God is intelligent. He is intellectual. He has a strategy. He determined the end from the beginning. He works all things after the counsel of his own will. When God was saying, let there be, he knew it was going to be Pentecost. <laughs> in fact, everything you read about him in Genesis is just a shadow of everything you're going to see in the book of Acts. And they are both the books of beginnings. One of them is the beginning of the earth. The other one is the beginning of the church. But they are both books of beginnings. So when you read the book of Acts, understand that God is at it again. 
Oh, can you prove it? Yes, I can prove it. The Apostle Paul said, God who spake in sundry times and in diverse places had in this last day spoken unto us by the Holy Ghost. He also talks about that the same God that said, let there be light has caused the light of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ to shine in our hearts. The same God who said, let there be light has caused the glory of the grace of Jesus Christ to shine in our hearts. Paul compares the creation to the recreation, uh, the redemption process to God re re-inhabiting the earth. It is God at it again. Look at your neighbor and say, he's at it again. Don't worry if you're in a chaotic situation. Don't worry if you don't have everything you need. Don't worry if everything looks kind of muddy. Don't worry if it's a mess right now because wherever the spirit moves, the spirit speaks. And when the spirit speaks, it'll straighten out the chaos. It'll bring order. It'll set up boundaries. It'll bring instruction. It'll bring formation. It, oh, you don't hear what I'm saying to you. Oh, let there be in my house. Let there be in my finances. Let there be in my marriage. Let there be in my church. Let there be in my body. If your body's sick, just say, let there be. Let there be. It's chaotic right now. It's infected right now. It's diseased right now, but I call it into order in the name of Jesus. Divine order! My God, my God, my God. This is good. This is good. You have to understand this. You have to eat this because what I don't want to happen is for the church to continue to get weaker and weaker in its understanding of its God. The reason we're getting weaker and weaker is that we have a church today who has fallen in love with cliches. Yeah, we're, we're preaching off of tweets. Yeah, we don't study now. We get, we get something that's tweeted and we take a tweet and start preaching off of it. We're taking fragments of other people's sermons and feeding it to the flock. You cannot feed polluted food to your children and raise healthy children. You have to break down and study to show thyself approved, a workman under God that need not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Hallelujah. Pentecost is not just something we do. It, it means something and every piece of it means something and I want you to understand what it means. Oh my God, I feel it. I feel it. I feel it. Something, something is about to happen in this place. Something is about to happen happen in you. I'm glad you have the Holy Ghost, but if you don't understand what you have, you can't use what you got. You can have a car, but if you can't drive it, you're not going nowhere. It's not enough to have it if you don't understand how it operates in your life. I can give you something, but if you don't learn how to manage it, you won't get the benefit out of the gift that you have. And God's got you tuned in right now because you're going to get some understanding. It's more than goose pimples. It's more than chill bumps. It's more than hitting high notes. You can get goose pimples listening to somebody singing a love song if they sing it well enough. The Holy Ghost is not your reaction to your moment. The Holy Ghost is Christ's download, his intelligence, his power, his enthusiasm, his ability, his might, and his strategy is being downloaded into your life. Don't you know you need God's download? You spent years trying to figure it out on your own. Spent years trying to do it your way. When are you going to humble down and say, not my will, but thine be done. Give me a download. Who am I? Where am I supposed to be? What am I supposed to be doing? Get ready for a download. Somebody give him 30 seconds of praise in this place. Now you must understand that we do not see the word Pentecost in the book of Genesis. We just see the work of the Holy Spirit in the book of Genesis. We do not hear anything about Pentecost until we get to the book of Exodus. In the book of Exodus, we begin, God introduced to us the term Pentecost. And Pentecost is provoked by the Passover. 
okay? So then you must realize that when they took the blood of the animal and, and of the lamb and placed it on the doorpost and the lintel, it was so that the death angel could pass over. And I taught about it Wednesday night in Bible class. And the death angel passed over. That is the Passover, the Paschal lamb, the sacrifice of God. The offering of God was designed not so that we could be escaped death, but that through substitution, death was already applied to the house. The blood was a sign that death had already visited the house. And so the death angel passed over because the work was done by the blood of the lamb. Do you hear what I'm saying to you? So that's where the Passover starts from. Pentecost sets its watch from Passover. Because in order to be Pentecost, which means 50, in order to be Pentecost, it starts counting at Passover. One. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And when you get to 50, which incidentally is seven weeks. Seven times seven is 49. But they couldn't celebrate the end of the seven weeks on the 49th day because it was the Sabbath day. But on the 50th day, that means the Pentecost had fully come. Are you hearing what I'm saying? That's why sometimes you will hear the Bible say the feast of the Passover and other places it will call it the feast of weeks. The Feast of Weeks and the Feast of Passover are the same thing. It's just that the Feast of Weeks is counting out in weeks what the Feast of Pentecost is counting out in days. The Feast of Weeks is seven weeks. That's why in the book of Daniel, it'll start talking about the Feast of Weeks. It starts talking about the weeks. It starts talking about seven times seven. We're going to see that in eschatology. We're going to see it in Old Testament theology because God does count. God does count. God does count. God is Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. He does count. You have a day to get in trouble. You got a day to get out of trouble. You got a day to go in the storm. You got a day to come out of the storm. God does keep count. He told Abraham, your children are going to sojourn in a strange country for 400 years, but afterwards, I'm going to bring them out. I came to bring good news to somebody. God has counted the days of your affliction. Everything that has a beginning has an end. Don't die till you get to your last day. God does keep count. He's a bookkeeper. He's an accountant. He's a Leviticus. He's a writer. He keeps schedule. He keeps schedule. He keeps it on course. He keeps it on time. He does count for everything. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you? So when we start talking about the Feast of Pentecost or the Feast of Weeks, we begin to understand what God has in mind. One of the other names is that it's called is the Feast of First Fruits. You have to realize that Pentecost comes to mean First Fruits because it is the harvest or the beginning of the harvest from a seed that was planted. Just put a little footnote on that. I'm going to come back to that again in a minute. Let's go back and stay around Egypt where the blood is on the doorpost and the children of Israel escape and they take the wealth of the unjust is laid up for the just and they take it with them and they escape out on eagle swings and God brings them out. They are going from being slaves to sons. They're going from being a servant to becoming a nation. And according to Old Testament theology, on the 50th day, God gave them the law which made them a people. He gave them an order. He gave them a structure. He gave them a constitution. It made them a nation. He brought them to Mount Sinai. He gave them power there. He legitimized them at Sinai. And the celebration continued to recognize we're not just wandering slaves. We are a nation. <laughs> 
Some of you are still wandering, walking around like wandering slaves, and you're just shouting because you escaped Pharaoh. But until you have Pentecost, you don't really become a people. And the Bible said God has made us a people who were not a people. He will legitimize you. You might have been a street walker. You might have been a whoremonger. You might have been a dope dealer. You might have been a stripper. You might have been a liar. You might have been illegitimate. But when God comes in your life, he legitimizes the illegitimate. He makes right the wrong. He makes the crooked path straight. He sets things in order. God will give you a new name. He'll give you new credit. He'll give you new order. He'll give you new structure. He'll put his name on your head. He'll write your name in his hand. He will legitimize you. He will make you his son. Oh my God, do you hear what I'm saying to you? I'm talking to somebody that never fit in with anybody. God is about to give you a Pentecost experience. His cloven tongues of fire are going to legitimize you. It's his brand on you. He branded you with the Holy Ghost. He owned you with the Holy Ghost. He legitimized you with the Holy Ghost. Or the Bible said he sealed you with the Holy Ghost. You know it's Campbell's soup, not because of the can, but because of the seal. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying? It's the seal that makes you know who you belong to. When God gives you the Holy Ghost, he puts his seal on you to authenticate so that every devil in hell will know not that child, that one belongs to me. Not that girl, she belongs to me. Not that house, that belongs to me. Oh, this is good. This is good because we need to understand this. Our anthology, our antiquity, our structure, our order, our background, our origin. Now people are paying all kind of money to get DNA testing so that they can find out where they came from. Because if you don't appreciate where you came from, you cannot appreciate where you're going. There's something to be said about tradition. There's something to be said about tradition. Tradition establishes you. It gives you order. A few Christmases ago, I dug out one of my mother's old recipes. Hadn't, had, I literally had not tasted it since I was eight years old. And she had baked this, uh, this, this dessert, this uh, ladyfinger dessert with a, a cheesecake center that she made when I was a little boy. And I found the recipe and I dug it out and I made it again. And I started passing it to my children. Why? It's just a little thing, but it's tradition. Tradition lets you know that you're not here by yourself. Tradition lets you know that there was somebody who came before you. Tradition identifies you and sets you apart. It don't seem like much, but in a world where the devil is trying to tell you you're nothing and you're nobody, tradition is a sign that somebody suffered and fought and gave and bled and died for me to have the privileges that I got right now. And I refuse refuse to let you have what my grandmama left me, what my great-grandfather left me. It's mine. I'm talking about generational blessings. I'm talking about generational wisdom. I'm talking about generational tenacity. I'm talking about generational fight. If you think I'm preaching by myself, you're blind. My mama is standing here. My grandmama's standing here. My grandfather's standing here. My great-great-grandfather's standing here. All of my teachers and all of my mentors and anybody who poured anything into me, they're all still standing here. Most of them are dead, but then they're not dead. That's why the Bible says that you can't get paid for your work when you die, for your works do follow you. I'm still using what they put down inside of me. That's why you ought to touch it. Did you get that? I'm still using what you put down inside of me. The work continues. The vessel has changed, but the oil is still flowing. Oh. Y'all didn't get that. I said the vessel has changed, but the oil is still flowing. If you know your Bible, the Bible said God told the widow, get you a bunch of vessels and borrow not a few. And as long as there was a vessel, the oil still flowed. They kept changing the vessels, but the oil never broke. God will change the vessel, but the oil will never break. From generation to generation, from everlasting to everlasting, thou art God. Somebody who understands what I'm preaching, give him a praise right now. (laughs) 
So then you must realize, you must realize then that when we're talking about Pentecost, we are also understanding that Pentecost is about harvest. Yeah, it's about seed time and harvest. It is considered the feast of harvest. It is, it is the residual on a seed planted. Yeah, the, the harvest comes from the sacrifice of a seed. Now I see why Jesus kept referring to himself as a seed. He said, except a grain of seed of uh, wheat fall into the ground and die, it abide alone. But if it die, it bring forth much fruit. No wonder he asked the Passover lamb when they hung him high and stretched him wide. The Bible said he rose from the dead for 30 days, showed himself alive for 40 days, and then told them to wait for Pentecost, which came on the 50th day, because that is the seventh week, and that is the time of the harvest. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, the first harvest was 3,000 souls got the download. It was Christ in you, the hope of glory. It's a download. Oh my God, that's what I'm trying to do right now. I'm trying to download into you what was downloaded into me so it will pass. The vessels may change, but the oil still flows. The vessels may change, but the oil still flows. The vessels may change, but the oil still flows. The vessels may change, but the oil still flows. The vessels may change, but the oil still flows. The vessels may change, but the oil still flows. The vessels may change, but the oil still flows. The vessels may change, but the oil still flows. Christ said, I'm here, but the vessels may change, but the oil is still going to flow. Oh, y'all don't hear what I'm saying. My spirit is going to flow into you. I have been with you. The vessels may change. You'll see me no more, but the oil will still flow. And so they had to wait because it was illegal for God to fill them on the 40th day. So they, they went to Jerusalem to wait for it to be legal for the download. Sometimes when my phone tells me I got a download, it'll let me know that the download is going to take a certain amount of time. And I know that in order to make the download, I have to leave the phone hooked up to Wi-Fi and leave it plugged in overnight because this is a big download. I can't download a big download in a short time. For what God was about to download to the church, they had to wait. Though it tarry, wait for it. My God, I feel the power of the Holy Ghost. God is about to give you a major download. That's why the devil is fighting you. That's why sickness is fighting you. That's why fear is fighting you. That's why depression is fighting you. The bigger the fight, the bigger the download. The bigger the fight, the bigger the download. I don't know who I'm talking to, but the bigger the fight, the bigger the download. If you've been in a big fight, you ought to praise him like you lost your mind because you're getting ready for a big download. So the Bible says <laughs> that they were in one place with one accord. Seventy souls sitting around waiting. What are they waiting on? They're waiting on the download. The download. The, the little line is going. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, it's going. It's going. It's going. It's going. It's going. It's going, and Jesus ascends while it's downloading. He ascends, and he ascends on a cloud, and it's still downloading. And he says, don't try to preach, because the download is still going on. Don't try to teach, because the download is still going on. Don't lay hands on nobody, because the download is still going on. You know, you can't get on your phone while you're downloading. 
You can't call nobody while you're downloading. <laughs> you can't take pictures while you're downloading. You got to wait for the download to finish and the phone will let you know when the download is over because it'll go off and it'll come on again. And when you see the sign coming, you know the download is over. So oh, you don't hear what I'm saying. So when the day of Pentecost was fully come, here comes God's logo like an apple on a phone. When the day of Pentecost was fully come and they were in one place with one accord, suddenly there came a sound from heaven like a mighty rushing wind. Cloven tongues appeared like as a fire and set upon each of them and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. That's the download. Now, I want you to see how real this is. God wanted it to be on the feast of the Passover because devout men from every nation were coming to Jerusalem with their harvests to celebrate the feast of Pentecost. They didn't just happen to be in town. They were in town bringing their wagons full of their harvest. So it's harvest time. <laughs> When I tell you it's Pentecost Sunday, I'm telling you it's harvest time. It's, it's the early harvest. It's the beginning of the harvest coming in. And so when the Pentecost happened and the Holy Ghost fell, there were devout men from Samaria and Judea and the uttermost parts of the earth were all gathered in Jerusalem because it was the Feast of Pentecost. But what they were doing was celebrating in the natural what God was doing in the spiritual. They came with one kind of harvest, but they left with another one because God was downloading on the day of hand when the day of Pentecost was fully come. And all of a sudden, they're, they're, they're operating on one level. They're, they're down in Jerusalem, operating in the earth realm. And God's up in the upper room, operating on another level. He's operating on a higher dimension. What you're doing down here doesn't even compare with what God is doing up there. And they heard those men in the upper room and they thought they were drunk. And Peter said, these men are not drunken as she supposed, seeing as it is the third of the hour of the day. But this is that which the prophet Joel spoke of, that in the last days, I will do a download. I will do a download on my sons and my daughters, on my handmaidens and my servants. I'm going to do a download, and that's how you're going to know you're in the last days because you're going to get a download. Don't be shocked by COVID-19 and all of this stuff. If you read your Bible, if you read your Bible, everything happening is in your Bible. Everything in your newspaper is in your Bible. All of the plagues and all of the wars and all of the chaos and all of the racial malice and hatred is in your Bible. One of the signs of the last days, the Bible said generations shall be against generation. In the original language, it is ethnos against ethnos or ethnicity against ethnicity. It is a sign of the end time. The killings in the street are a sign of the end time. Calling right wrong is a sign of the end time. The return of injustice is a sign of the end time. Plagues that nobody can cure is a sign of the end time. Body bags stacked up in the street is a sign of the end time. Inflation with food is a sign of the end time. The Bible said it would take a bag of gold to buy a loaf of bread. That's inflation. It's a sign of the end time. The short shortage of food is a sign of the end time. Don't be shocked. All these years we've been preaching it, then when it happens, you're walking around with your mouth hanging open. The Bible said, the Bible said, the Bible said, in the last days it would be a great falling away. So you're talking about the nuns generation and there's a falling away and many people are not believing and they don't believe in church. That ain't shocking. The Bible said in the last days there'd be a great falling away. It's a sign of the end time. It's a sign of the end time. 
It's a sign of the end time. Every time you see somebody with their knee on somebody's neck, it's a sign of the end time. And you see a justice system that goes blind and looks the other way, it's a sign of the end time. Every time you see a killing like that, it's a sign of the end time. Every time you see a mother shoot her baby, it's a sign of the end time. Every time you see a child turn against a parent and the parent turn against a child, it's that mothers will be against daughters and fathers will be against sons. It's all prophetic, it's a sign. Can you handle this kind of preaching? It's a sign of the end time. God is making a download. The download is so profound. The download is so powerful. God is downloading information. Now, I got to go deeper. I want you to understand what's going to happen. I want you to understand what God is doing. I want you to understand what it means to be filled with the Spirit. I want you to understand you've been walking in your flesh so long that your, your senses are weak. Your senses are weak because you don't use them much. But now you're going to have to use your senses. Because you're locked up in your house, you got to use your senses. You can't lean on somebody else's anointing. You got to use your senses. You got to activate your prayer life. You got to clap your hands. You got to get down by your bed and plead the blood for yourself. Oh my God. You can't just walk up and have somebody lay their hands on you. You got to get God to lay his hands on you. We're coming into the end time. By the way, the laying of hands is a sign of a download. Glory to God. It's a, it's a sign of a download. And the Bible said, lay hands suddenly on no man. Don't download what you got to just anybody. Don't cast your pearls to the swine. Don't give that which is holy to the dog. They have to earn the right to get what you got. You suffered for it. You fought for it. You bled for it. You died for it. You cried for it. Now you think you're going to come up and get it in a bag like a bunch of chicken McNuggets? The devil is a lie. You got to go through something to get this. Oh! Oh! I feel like running. Somebody help me praise him in here. Jesus says, I have yet many things to say unto you, but you cannot bear them now. It, I, I got intelligence that I want to give you, but you're not ready for it now. He didn't say you're not going to ever get it. You're not ready for it. When? Now. You're not ready for it now. How be it? Or howsoever. When he, the spirit of truth has come, he will guide you into everything I didn't tell you. All truth. For he shall not speak of himself. Now I want you to underline that. He shall not speak of himself. 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 I want you to understand what that means. You, you got to understand that because the, one of the names of the Holy Spirit is comforter. And when we think a comforter, we think that God is a motivational speaker and that he's just saying stuff to make you feel good. But the Holy Spirit cannot speak of himself. He can't just say something of his own accord. He cannot speak of himself. But whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak. So if he didn't hear, you are healed. He cannot say you are healed. If he did not hear you are coming out, he cannot say you are coming out. See, see, God, when he gives you the Holy Ghost, is giving you classified information because the Holy Ghost is the only one who's been sitting at the boardroom in heaven who overheard the conversation as to what you shall be. And so when he speaks into you and says something, he cannot, he cannot, he cannot, he cannot, he cannot, he cannot, he cannot speak. Oh, shut. 
He cannot speak. He cannot speak. He cannot speak. He cannot speak of himself. But whatsoever he heareth, that shall he speak. You cannot, he cannot download something that wasn't there. <laughs> if the download says you're healed, y'all don't hear me. If the download says you're blessed, if the download says you're the head, if the download says you're an overcomer, he's he not just saying that to make you feel better, to help you get some rest tonight. He cannot speak of himself. He can only speak whatsoever he hears. If he didn't hear it in the boardroom of heaven, he cannot speak it in the earth realm. The Holy Spirit is in your life to give you classified information. Are y'all getting what I'm saying to you? Put it back up there. I'm not through with it. He shall not speak of himself. Ay, 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 ay. He shall not speak of himself. Everything he ever told you was something he overheard. <laughs> if he said it's not a sickness unto death, it's because he heard it's not a sickness unto death. If he said you're going to be all right, it's because he heard you're going to be all right. If he said you're going to come over, it's because he heard you were going to come over. He shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak. And he will. He will. He will. He will show you things to come. So, while you are praying about what is, he is answering about what is to come. And that's why you're having a breakdown in your conversation. Because you're praying about what you're going through. And he's answering about what you're going to. He will show you things to come while you're worried about things that are. He's talking about things to come. I never will forget I was a little boy sitting in the back of the car and I was riding back with my mother and my mother had spoken for her sorority meeting and I was sitting in the back of a green Chrysler and I told my mother, I said, right now, I'm going to hear you speak. And they called me Miss Jake's son. But the time will come. You'll come to hear me speak. And they'll call you Tom Jake's mother. I don't know how I knew it. But it was a download of things to come. Is there anybody in here? that keeps getting flashes of things to come and it doesn't fit your situation and you don't see it in your circumstance. But every time you get ready to give up, you get a download that says if you hold out a little while longer, God! Look at somebody say, I got a download. I would have fainted. But I got a download. I would have backslid, but I got a download. I would have given up, but I got a download. I would have walked away, but I got a download. Hey! The Holy Ghost, Jesus said, there's a lot more I want to tell you. I'm not finished yet, but you can't bear them now. 
How be it, when the spirit of truth has come, <laughs> you're going to get a download. And every time the enemy thinks he's got your back to the corner, I'm going to give you a download. Is there anybody in here that's ever been backed in a corner and you didn't know what to do? And all of a sudden you had a download and God told you what to do or who to call or what to do to change the situation. All of that is Pentecost. <laughs> of that is Pentecost. I'm going to show you one more thing and I'm going to close. So in Acts chapter 1, I believe it's verse 8. He says, ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. You shall download. Receive power. You ain't got to be powerful. All you got to do is accept the download. If you accept the download, you shall receive power power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. Jesus is talking to his disciples. Now this is good. Let me come down here. This is good. This is good. Can I come down here? I want to come down here. Yeah, I want to come down here. I want you to see this. This is, this is real good. Jesus is talking to his disciples and he's saying to his disciples, he says, you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And this is what blew my mind. He says, and ye shall be witnesses unto me. And I thought, wait a minute. What do you mean they shall be witnesses? Aren't they already witnesses? Aren't they witnesses to you already? Uh, wait a minute, Jesus. They were there when you called them. They were there when you healed the woman with the issue of blood. They were there when you healed blind Bartimaeus. They were there when you called Lazarus out of the grave. Aren't they already witnesses? They were there when Judas prayed you. They were there when they took you from judgment hall to judgment hall. They were there when they nailed you to the cross. They were there when you hung you high and stretched you out. Aren't they already witnesses? They were there when the tomb was empty. They saw you come out of the grave. They know that the tomb is empty. If anybody ought to be witnesses, these boys ought to be witnesses. And yet he said, ye shall be witnesses unto me. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you? You shall be witnesses unto me. And all of a sudden he said, no, 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 no. no. They're not witnesses because of the things they saw me do. Because the things they saw me do don't define who I am. In, in order to be a witness unto me, you have to receive the witness on the inside. The Holy Ghost is the only one who can be a, a witness unto me because the Bible says that the Lamb was slain from the foundations of the world and you weren't there from the foundations of the world but the Holy Ghost was there from the foundations of the world. And the reason you aren't witnesses is because the witness is coming. The witness is coming, you see that? The witness, the witness, witness, witness. The witness, witness, witness. The witness, witness, witness. The witness that was there when I said, let there be. The witness that was there when I was setting up in the council of God and said, let us make man in our own likeness and in our image. The witness that was there before there was a where or when or this or that. The witness is coming. The witness is coming. Look at your neighbor and say, the witness is coming. Now you shall be witnesses unto me. After that, the Holy Ghost has come up on you. <laughs> when the Holy Ghost comes up on you, he shall testify of me. Because you, you only see through a glass darkly. You only got partial information. You don't even know the facts. But when he, which is perfect, is come, you shall be witnesses 
on a level you were never a witness before. So he says, don't preach nothing yet. Because <laughs> you're not ready until the Holy Ghost has come upon you. Because the Holy Ghost knows my roots. <laughs> the Holy Ghost goes into my ancient of days. The Holy Ghost goes back into the corridors of heaven. The Holy Ghost was there when Lucifer fell from heaven. The Holy Ghost was there before I cast the first star out into the sky. He can be a witness of me. And the only way you can be a witness is to receive the witness. Witness, 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 witness. Y'all don't know nothing about that. Witness, witness. My soul is a witness for my Lord. My soul is a witness for my Lord. He made me a witness for my Lord. I'm a sanctified witness for my Lord. I'm a witness, a witness for my Lord. I'm a sanctified witness for my Lord. I'm a born again witness for my Lord. My soul is a witness. He made me 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 a witness. I'm a baptized witness. I'm a sanctified witness. I'm a sanctified witness. He made me a witness. He witness, witness. Witness, witness. Witness, witness. witness. He made me a witness. Witness, 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 a 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 witness, clap your hands everybody, let's have a little turn.
I'm trying to tell you is that you got a whole lot of Passover, but not enough Pentecost. You got a whole lot of Passover, but not enough Pentecost. Am I my side? Yeah. Oh, excuse me. You, you got a whole lot of Passover. You, you, you got that part down by death, burial, resurrection. You got all of that down, down pat, but you, you, you missed the download. And the reason you haven't heard much about the Feast of Pentecost is that you're still stuck at the Passover. You're stuck back there at the Passover. And all of your songs and all of your celebrations and all of your festivities and all of your faith is back there where God was and not where God is. This is the reign of the Holy Spirit. Spirit. For the end times, Asha, you're going to have to have the Holy Spirit. It is the Holy Spirit that withstands the spirit of the Antichrist. Thessalonians, he that led us shall continue to let until he be taken out of the way. The Antichrist can never take over as long as the Holy Spirit is reigning. This is the reign. Oh, I'm about to mess up a good Sunday morning service. This is the rain. This is the rain and the rulership of the Holy Spirit. I'm going to prove it to you. In Acts chapter 2, there was a sound from heaven like a mighty rushing wind. Cloven tongues appeared like a fire set upon each of them. They were all filled with the Holy Ghost. Now they were filled again in Acts chapter 10, verse 44 through 48. But no wind, no fire, no sound, just feel. They were filled again in Acts chapter 19, 1 through 5. No wind, no fire, no processional of any kind. Why did the procession happen in 2, but it didn't happen in 10, and it didn't happen in 19? Because in Acts chapter 2, it was more than filling with the Holy Ghost. It was the beginning of the reign of the Holy Spirit over this era. And you still back at the cross talking about the Passover, and we have come into Pentecost, and you're missing this. And this is not a denomination. Denomination. This is not a denomination. This is no more a denomination than the Passover was. This is not a doctrine. It's no more a doctrine than the Passover was. It's for every believer. Every believer. God got a download for every believer. It's just like your phone. They'll notify everybody got an Apple phone. Get a download at the same time. Ain't my fault if you don't download it. You get the notification that it's there, but you got to do the download. Yes, and I came to notify you. Yes, hey, it's here. And for these devils we're fighting right now, these COVID devils, these suicide devils, these depression devils, this spouse abusing devil that is loose in this earth right now, this crazy devil that's loose in this earth right now, when in all of your life have you seen the whole world shut down at the same time and you couldn't go nowhere or fly nowhere or drive anywhere to escape it? Don't you know this is not ordinary? You run around talking about this is the flu. I've never seen the flu shut down the planet. You need the download. You need the download. Because God only knows what's going to happen next. God only knows what's going to happen next. God only knows what's going to happen next. And now is the time. If you got a notification, you better take this download. If he is knocking at the door of your heart, you better take this download. 
Because this last whooping that came through this earth, yes, sir. I don't care if you had a black card, you couldn't pay it off. I don't care if you was a billionaire, you couldn't fix it. I don't care if you was the prettiest woman in the world, you couldn't fix it. I don't care if you was a king and a potentate, you couldn't fix it. Nobody could fix it. And there's nothing but God showing you, when I get ready to do something, can't nobody handle me. All of your doctors and all of your scientists and all of your stuff and all of your learning can't do nothing with me. If I shut it down, just shut down if I shut it down. I shut it down. You need to download. You need to download. Everything else you trusted in. I don't believe in God. I don't believe in God. I believe in science. That's nice. How's that working for you? I don't believe in God. I believe in what I can see and what I can touch and what I can count. How's that working for you? How's the stock market working for you? How's that working for you? Uh, how's the airport working for you and the airlines and, and the cruise, cruise industry? How's that working for you? All the stuff that you believed in because you didn't believe in God because you couldn't see him and you couldn't touch him. How is the stuff you believe in working for you now? It ain't working at all. It ain't none of it working. None of it's working. The just shall live <laughs> by faith. I want to pray for you. See, I'm almost glad that most of the churches are closed. Because too many people have a relationship with the church and not with God. You're real good at church, but you're real poor at Jesus. You got a big name in the church circle, but no name in the book of life. For years we've hidden behind who we were up front, how many people we had, <laughs> how bad our choir was, how many degrees our pastor had, how many locations we had across the country. All of them shut down now. And them that's opening up, they're opening up, but ain't nobody coming. Go on and open. <laughs> open all you want to. I checked. I looked. You open. But two-thirds of your people ain't there. You think you have the power to open a door that God has closed? Or close a door that God has opened? Don't you know this is out of your hands? When God says it's over, it'll be over. Until he says it's over, all we got to do is humble down and get someplace and sit down and shut up. Hey. Shut up! I'm glad I was raised by old folks because when it was thundering and lightning, the old folks would say, shut up, God is talking. <laughs> shut up! God is talking. God is talking America. God is talking Russia. God is talking Great Britain. God is talking all over the world. South America, God is talking. North Korea, God is talking. Japan, God is talking. China, God is talking. He don't care whether you believe it or not. He don't care what you post on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. God ain't scared of you deleting him. Your unbelief does not make God's word of no effect. You're so used to being powerful. I just don't believe. Who cares? 
I just say, I, 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 nothing. The Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth keep silence before him. I told him, whatever you do, I'm good with it. Whatever you do, I'm good with it. Whatever you don't do, I'm good with it. I trust you. I have to trust you. Got no choice but to trust you. Ain't nothing I can do about it. I got to trust you. I'm not bragging about having faith. I ain't got nothing else to have. I got to have faith. You do too. You do too. I know you in the big office uptown in New York, overlooking the city, got all of them employees. You got to trust him too. Just like the janitor downstairs in the basement with the mop in the bucket. You, well, see, faith is the great equalizer. Yes, sir. It don't belong to the elite. It don't belong to the mighty. It don't belong to the political. It don't belong to the great. White folks don't own it. Black folks don't own it. Brown folks don't own it. Faith is the great equalizer. Yes. It may be the only thing that's fair. Illiterate or intellectual. You don't come through this door because you're smart. You come through this door because you believe. believe. What do you believe? My soul. Where do you stand with God? Yeah, On this Pentecost Sunday. And I hope I gave you enough word for you to begin to understand what Pentecost means, what it really means. I hope somebody studies it and dissects it and breaks it apart. I hope I whet your appetite to go deeper. Because even those of us who come from the tradition really lack understanding. And some of us have been filled with the Holy Spirit, but we don't understand what we got. It's just like having a car and not being able to run it. A dog can chase down a car, but he can't drive. You must understand. This is a moment for you to come into an understanding that you need a personal encounter with God. It ain't based on your goodness. Ain't nobody good but God. Nobody's good but God. That's why he said, except you become like a child and just believe me. Because you can't earn it. You have to receive it. Be honest with you, when I get a download, I don't know how they do it. I don't understand it. I don't know whether it's algorithm or jackarhythm. All I know is how to receive it. God is going to do some things that you don't understand, and you have to have faith to receive it. Can I pray for you today that God would just Humble down all of your need to control and understand and see and be convinced and be in power. Humble all of that down. And you just come to the garden like Jesus and say, not my will, but thine be done. Stop trying to control everybody. You can't control your kids. You can't control yourself. Try trying to boss everybody around and fix everybody. You're fixing this foolishness. How can you know what everybody ought to do and you can't figure out what you ought to do? Shut up. Shut up. Get down on your knees somewhere. Yes, sir. And can I pray for you? That God would just let you receive. Ooh. I feel a breeze. The wind of the Holy Spirit is blowing your way. I hear a knocking at the door of your heart. He's knocking. Will you open? Father, whoever's out there that, that can hear with their inner ear, that can see with their inner eye, that can sense in their spirit the tug of God. 
draw them closer. Play draw me nearer. Father, draw them closer. We, 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 none of us are, are where we need to be, want to be, got to be. But today, draw us closer to that precious bleeding side. Draw me nearer, Jesus. That sinner that's closest to hell, that backslider, that angry, that confused, that hurt, that broken individual, draw them to you, Jesus. Don't fight it, don't fight it, don't fight it. Let him draw you, let him draw you. Open your heart, open your heart, open your heart, open your heart, come on, open your heart, open your heart, open it wide, draw me. Come right in your house right now, right now, and draw you. He loves you. Nearer, blessed Lord, to the cross where thou hast died. Draw me I heard you. I have heard thy voice. Uh -huh. And it told, it told me. It to told me about your love. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. But I long, I long to, to rise I want to rise up. In the arms Take me in your arms of faith and be closer. And be Before I close, if you accepted Christ as your personal Savior, I want you to start reading scriptures about being filled with the Spirit of God. I want to walk you from Passover to Pentecost. I want you to start reading it. I've got books and materials about the Holy Spirit, how to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. If you are filled with the Holy Spirit, I want you, by reason of use, to start praying in the Spirit, listening for the Spirit, walking in the Spirit. Come out of your feelings. If you were in the Spirit like you were in your feelings, you would have peace. You live in your feelings and not in your Spirit. Come out of your feelings. You can't trust them. You can't trust your feelings. They'll lead you to the cliff and drop you off. They'll take your life. They'll steal your peace. Come out of your feelings and start coming into the spirit. There are things that God wants to tell you. <laughs> he wants to show you things to come. 
He wants to download some things that you need to know. You need to know. It's the great download. If this message has blessed you in any kind of way, I want to hear from you. Hit me up on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. If it's blessed you or you know somebody who needs to hear this level of word. I know it was kind of meaty for Sunday morning. It felt like Wednesday night, but, but I, I want to leave it with you. If you know somebody who needs to hear it, share it with them. If it bless your life in a special way, sow into it. Pentecost is about harvest. You need a harvest. I need a harvest. Oh God, America needs a harvest. It's the only thing I see left. The only way that we're gonna love each other and walk together and be in peace is for America to get down on its knees and humble itself. It's, it's, it's the only thing that's gonna keep us from going off the cliff. Eating up with pride and vanity and arrogance and foolishness. We eat more news than we do word. You hear what I said? We eat more news than we do word. We got to get down on our knees and see what God says. And I want you to receive that harvest in your life, in your business, in your company. Some of you are not open, some of you are half open, some of you are quarter open. You're a quarter open, but you got 100% bills. You need a miracle from God. Sow into the kingdom of God and let's touch and agree for God to open up a special blessing for your business, for your life, for your future. Sweetheart, ain't nothing else working. <laughs> you ain't got nothing else to try. Try Jesus. Ain't nothing else working. Nobody else knows what they're doing. They're all talking like they lost their mind. The just shall live by faith. I touch and agree with every business owner, every company, every unemployed person, every person who's wondering about tomorrow. I speak peace to your fears and to your doubts, and I challenge you to walk by faith. I pray over every seed you sow, everything that's planted into the kingdom, that you would find a fertile place, an abundant place, that whatever you have a supply of, that you would find someone who needs what you have. For every job seeker, I pray for you right now in the name of Jesus. For every person who's been worried to death about how you're gonna make it, I pray for you right now in the name of Jesus. I declare increase over your life. I declare harvest. This is the feast of Pentecost. I declare a harvest over your seed right now. Press down, shaken together, running over. And I pray that you get more than you expect. In Jesus name, amen. God bless you. I love you. Have a great week. Thank you for being here. Thank you, my little congregation. <laughs> Don't matter. Just a handful of us, but we're still going on. Hallelujah. Here and a little, there a little, but we're still going on. I got a feeling everything's going to be all right. You get a download? I got one too. I want to be close to you, Jesus, too.